Hello, one and all, to this Kerbal Space Program video. I hope that was an appropriate level of enthusiasm because, once again, I am ill. Well, I'm not ill, I'm just a bit sniffly, a bit, bit, bit bunged up, so I think I'm going down with a bit of a cold, but that out of the way, that's why I might sound a bit subdued in this video. But this is the continuation episode of the Jewel One Space Station, which you can watch if you haven't already. Uh, there is a link in the description and in the last 20 seconds of this video on screen. A link that will work on mobile platforms if you want. But we're going to be trying out the lander that's built into it and getting some science from Val and Bop. And that's the mission plan. And this video is in part brought to you by lootcrate.com slash Matt. Uh, I won't talk about this too much because I know some of you don't like the fact I get sponsored by Loot Crate for some reason. But uh, there's a link in the description uh, if you want to get 10% off at Loot Crate. You can go www.lootcrate.com slash Matt and then use the coupon code Matt. And there will be an unboxing at the end of this video if you want to watch that. But let's just get back to the mission here. I'll just kind of fast forward this bit because I don't want this video to go on too long since we're going to be doing three uh, landings in total at various different biomes on Val and Bop. But it's very easy to get an encounter with Val because our orbit was already quite similar to Val's anyway. In fact, I'm not doing the most efficient. Uh, encounter with it because we have more than enough fuel to get our landing so we're gonna be just be a bit sloppy sometimes just for the sake of not making this mission go on too long so we are just doing our burn uh, it takes less than 500 meters per second of Delta V with the angle we came in at so uh, yeah absolutely fine uh, now obviously the Delta V total is in the top uh, right hand corner of the screen and and some of you uh, might be aware that that's not currently it's a 1300 ish delta v and some of you might be aware that that's not actually enough for us to land and then take off and get back to the station with but uh if you are that observant you will have also probably noticed the fact that we have a drilling rig and a mining uh, refinery on this uh, sh on this lander so we can refuel ourselves and that's it actually we can refuel ourselves here we are just touching down nice and gently i like to slow down as much as possible really in reality those landing legs can withstand quite uh, heavy landings but i i just like to try and make sure i'm going as slowly as i can really so here we are just planting our flag i like to name my landing sites after the biome i'm in just so it makes it easier when it comes to checking which biomes you've already got science from and then we can deploy the drill you don't have to do it on EVA if you don't want to but I just felt like it and there were no police around so I just went ahead and did it and then we can just go and get our science from the science junior and you might have noticed I actually forgot to add a mystery goon unit to this lander and I also forgot to add uh, resource scanning things so I, I, it's a bit of a potluck as to whether or not I'd have a very high ore concentration in the ground so maybe if you were going to go ahead and download this craft which you can do from the description Maybe just add those things to the lander. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's more just to demonstrate the functions of the lander rather than it. I mean, I don't, I've got the full tech tree unlocked, so I don't really need the science personally. But, you know, if you, yeah, yeah, that's it really. So we're on another biome, and we can just get our drills down, and then we can just plant our flag, get our science, and then head off again. Sorry, I didn't want to, like I said, I don't want this video to go on too long, so we can just skip through these bits. Anyway, now I've kind of gone through the basic actions of what's going on, I feel like I don't really need to talk too much about, that was a bit of a close encounter, wasn't it? I feel like I don't really need to talk too much about what's going on in this video, really this, is, this isn't this is really meant to be a tutorial or anything, so if you want to learn how to dock and do the basic things, then there are other videos you could check out. If you want to learn this stuff, this is more just for, uh, <laughs> I was going to say entertainment purposes, if you find if you find sort of droning on about nonsense uh, entertaining, then, you know, more power to you. But um, I just thought about talk about what's been going on. In fact, I am very proud to announce that I hit 5 million views uh, a while ago, actually. I think we're on 5.3 million now, but still, that's, um, it didn't sink in at first. And I started thinking, I was like, that's quite a lot of views, actually. So, you know, big milestone there, big milestone there. In fact, we should also be hitting 40,000 subscribers uh, in the not too distant future as well, which, um, again, is absolutely phenomenal. So thank you, uh, everyone, for your continued support and sticking by me on this on this journey. Um, but yeah, uh, outside of my channel, I've been playing quite a bit of Battlefield 1, actually, and I'm enjoying that a lot, actually. Battlefield 1, great game, great game. Uh, I think I still prefer Call of Duty. I mean, well, I mean, up to Modern Warfare 3. After after Modern Warfare 3, they became pretty awful. Uh, I think I just prefer the... I, I always likened Call of Duty to kind of having a paintball feel to it in terms of its actual gameplay. Always our encounter with the dual station there. And then we can just obviously, like... 
I'm just kind of fast forwarding just showing you the key parts here because I appreciate that it might not be the most interesting thing to watch me slowly edge towards your station using monopellant. Um, the monopellant tanks on the lander in case you're wondering are in the commander module. The lander can actually contains monopellant so we can just use the monopellant from that and don't need a dedicated tank. And here we are setting our encounter with bot, bop, not bol, bop. Uh, now it can be quite a hard thing to get an encounter with for the same reasons that Minmus can sometimes be hard to get an encounter with because it's on that inclined plane but it's, it's it's not a problem to be honest I just use the skip orbit button to get the encounter and then we can just slow ourselves down now Pol and Bop are very easy to land on uh, they're kind of like gilly in the sense that they're very easy to land on but it takes a little while to slow down at them uh, as you can see it's going to take a, just over 500 delta V to match our speed to bops but then once we actually capture it yeah we see it very quickly circularizes in fact we're going to go straight down to landing not bother circularizing around it because you know I wasn't bothered about landing at that one particular easter egg on this planet because I like to keep my videos I know some people don't like seeing uh, air quote spoilers I don't, I don't really I don't know if you consider it a spoiler but there we are touching down very slowly again even though bop you can smash down at very high speeds and it doesn't make a difference so here we are grabbing our science and going on our EVA space walk on bop and not a lot more to say about that really uh, just use the drill use the uh, mining rig and we can set off again in fact I thought I was gonna do another landing at bop uh, but now come to think of it I don't think I do because there were no police around and I can't be controlled sometimes um, that's just how I live my life so we're just gonna go ahead and burn you can see very quickly our papuapsis is soaring up so we can almost look at that we already can see our periapsis already and then we can just circularize for a mere not even 20 de 20 meters per second of delta v i know some of you sometimes ask me what delta v means and i guess maybe it might be a bit of a confusing term at first delta v basically means delta is the greek symbol but in like science and things it generally means change in so delta v and v means velocity so delta v would mean how much your ship can change its speed how much it can change its velocity so uh, at the moment our ship ha currently has around 2500 meters per second of delta v now there are ways other than just adding more fuel to increase your delta v such as you know if you do burns at periapsis or use gravity assists you can potentially change your speed by a lot more than what uh, the raw delta v readout might sometimes suggest but that's generally it so see this burn here we're going to need to change our speed we're going to need to accelerate by 272 meters per second and that will be reflected on our total delta v if that makes sense so there we go we can just tweak we can add a maneuver node and just tweak things about and get a closer encounter with the jewel station and well, that's it we can just do our burn there so we're going to do a fire burn, let's see, half a meter per second. So in fact, sometimes you could even use the RCS thrusters for burns as small as this because it can get much more precise things. I think we're going to do most of the burn with the engine, then we can just turn on our RCS to do the final bit. So you just use H and N on the... So turn on RCS, then use H and N to go forwards and backwards, and we just tweak it and get our encounters. So then we can just accelerate down, well, time accelerate down, and get our target. So anyway, I think I was on a bit of a tangent about Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty, but I've completely forgot what I was talking about now but the Nintendo Switch was announced which I'm pretty excited for I mean it just looks like a tablet that can be plugged into a TV so I don't really think it's gonna be that powerful and everyone's getting hyped about it being, being able to play Skyrim and I'm like but Skyrim came out a long time ago so you know I mean pff, I might get a Wii U now the price is gonna inevitably drop uh, because all I really care about is Zelda and yeah I don't know I'm not I'm not really as hyped as everyone else seems to be getting about the NX or the Switch even but, you know, whatever. I guess I'm not the target demographic for that. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this video, to be honest. We can actually look see how much more science you can get by processing it in a lab. And that about wraps it up for this mission. Um, and I haven't really got any other mouse. I'm sorry. I feel like I've, I've probably not sounded quite as chirpy as I might normally. I don't think I sound chirpy anyway, but uh, I'm a bit more sort of subdued in this video. But uh, now we're going to cut away to the uh, amazing unboxing of a loot crate. I should warn you, I stayed in quite a questionable B&B before filming that video and I woke up with quite a bit of acne on my forehead. So I do apologise for, you know, I know you guys are usually used to me looking like a Greek god in videos. So I apologise that there are going to be some imperfections uh, in this one. I'm sorry. But yeah, I hope you enjoy the unboxing and goodbye. Hello and welcome to my unboxing of this loot crate. And we're going to o open this loot crate with the multi-tool we got from the previous loot crate. Just, um, it didn't actually have a knife on it, so I'm basically opening it with a screwdriver. Can we get the camera down a bit? Uh, as you can see, I've dressed up a bit more for this video. Because um, I wanted... 
and it really is as easy as that. So I don't actually know the theme of this crate yet because I thought it'd be fun to try and guess what the theme is um, without by going through it. Go ahead and open it. Da -da -da -da. Oh wow, look at that. That was that, my eyes just immediately got drawn to that. So this is a character from Overwatch in their box. It doesn't actually need a scissors to open it. <laughs> That's beautiful, that is. But we can improve him, I think, using the Lancer that we got from the what a coincidence, I just have to have all of the loot crate stuff still here from last time. So there we go, we can arm him with the Lancer. And that's basically improved him by about 100 million times. So, oh my god, I actually needed gloves. Got some fingerless gaming gloves now. I think I would have preferred uh, gloves with fingers, all things. But there we go. Peace. I like the design though, those gloves. We have... <laughs> Legend of Zelda socks. Not a lot to say about them, really. These are, well, I mean, these are socks. Not much more I can really say about a pair of socks, really. But there you go. <laughs> now, Pac-Man. This looks pretty. I'm already more excited about this crate because I actually play. So I don't really play war games. I've played, been playing Battlefield 1, actually. But that's about it. So th these are just uh, plasters, actually. They're just plasters. Uh, right, we have a, oh, this is cool. We have a Mario, so I think we're gonna have to use the um, the multi tool from last. There we go. Just rip it. There we go. There we go. Now it just opens perfectly. So this is a just a. Is it a sticker? Oh, it's a magnet. It's a magnet. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Well, he can go on the on the PC. Because magnets are fine to put next to electronics, it's absolutely fine. Let's put him down by the mechanical hard drives, actually. That's a good idea. We have... Oh, another badge! So the theme is obviously Rumble. Well, I wouldn't have guessed that from the content. I was thinking Retro, maybe, from the Sonic and Pac-Man and the Mario. But then we had an Overwatch character. So a bit of a loose theme. That's pretty cool. Uh, the poster, so I can't see this yet, so I hope it's good. Ah, that's pretty good, I like that. Now this looks like a Titanfall shirt, but it's quite a cool shirt, I think. That's, that's quite cool, we can just pop this on here. There we go. So um, that was the, that was the loot crate, but uh, yeah, that was, that was what we got. So in terms of overall, um, I like this guy. This guy's cool. He's be definitely better than the Lancer from the last box. I wish I played Overwatch. I could probably understand a bit more. I like it. I more prefer it to the Lancer anyway. These are plasters. I did cut my thumb though recently. That's probably not the best way to apply it, but you can see the Pac-Man design. I would have preferred fingered gloves. That was probably a better way of phrasing that. But uh, I'll probably wear them when I go cycling. And the sticker, uh, the sticker, the the uh, magnet. Um, yeah, it's a, it's all right. So if you play Overwatch and you play as this um, angsty teenager character, then this will probably be a really good crate. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I you meant a game with fingerless gloves. Maybe I should try gaming with these. I haven't actually filmed the Kerbal video that this is attached to yet. So maybe I should, I'll, I'll film it. This is my promise to you guys. I'm going to go, the video that you've just watched will have been filmed with me wearing Sonic the Hedgehog fingerless gloves. But thank you for watching this shoddy and, un and unprofessional unboxing. And I will see you around.